the bridges that far-right groups make, consciously make, to bring people into their movement runs right through the type of guests that Joe Rogan has on his show. Yep, so they're coming for another free speech guy. This time it's Joe Rogan. Not a surprise. It's You can't give a right-wing ideas a platform without getting targeted by the left, it seems. Even if you get into a 45-minute argument with Steven Crowder, you're still a uh, right-winger to them. But let's see why it's time to end the Joe Rogan experience, shall we? Throughout his 30-year career in entertainment, Joe Rogan has earned a legion of fans as the host of Fear Factor, the voice of the UFC, and through his appearance on Mad TV. But despite these roles, he's mostly known as the host of the highly successful Joe Rogan Experience podcast, which is the eighth most downloaded podcast of any category. In the years since his podcast debuted, Rogan has become one of the most influential celebrities in the United States, with Rolling Stone going as far as naming him the 21st century Timothy Leary. While many would claim that Rogan's podcast is pure entertainment, Rogan's rhetoric and choices of whom to associate his podcast with are harmful to his listeners and promote hysteria among his audience. There it is. Great guy, great guy, except for the people he associates with, those evil right-wingers. Throughout his podcast history, he, among with various guests, have constantly discussed and given credence to various conspiracy theories. Ooh. Rogan has proclaimed on his podcast that he believed that the Apollo astronauts did not land on the moon, that the United States government was behind the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and that the government found aliens in Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, so it's a hit job. I see what's going on here. Right underneath, they have an embedded YouTube video titled Joe Rogan and Alex Jones on Pizzagate, Anthony Weiner, Hillary Clinton, John Podesta. Because Joe himself points out if you ask questions, they demonize you. In addition, Rogan has spent countless hours dissecting the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center. Ooh, a truther too, huh? Providing various theories to who was truly behind the attacks and even saying, I gotta go with controlled demolition. If I had to, one way or the other, I absolutely don't know. But I would not be surprised if it was proven that it was a controlled demolition. Well, clearly this invalidates everything his guests have to say. By giving legitimacy to these conspiracy theories, amongst others, Rogan is encouraging the fake news movement and is essentially telling his audience not to trust anything that is generally accepted as true or pushed down their throat as true. Rogan, whether he is aware of it or not, is promoting alt-right figures and their ideology through his podcast. His list of guests include Alex Jones, Miley Yiannopoulos, and Steven Crowder, all of whom have espoused rhetoric that is factually inaccurate, I'm going to need citations, and who deliberately instill fear of hatreds for their own benefit. Crazy, right? Alt-right, Alex, Milo, Steven, maybe Milo, arguably. And factually inaccurate, I'm gonna have to see your numbers and deliberately instill fear, hey, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, not really. Rogan discussed his fondness for Alex Jones in a discussion with Steven Crowder by saying he is an interesting and entertaining person. This description is a seal of approval to a man who actively promotes theories that tragedy is such a Sandy Hook. There it is, Sandy Hook every time. And the Las Vegas shooting are false flag operations by the United States government. In order to hoodwink his audience into buying marked up products sold directly by Jones himself, as seen in John Oliver's piece about his men's. Oh, John Oliver. The comedian John Oliver. Okay. Yeah. Joe Rogan's podcast started by selling uh, supplements too. But, no, oh, you want him off the air, so I guess I guess that follows. Rogan is playing right into the alt-right's hands by providing a platform that humanizes them because <laughs> they're not humans. And instead of fact-checking their ludicrous statements, which he does, and in fact found out that Gavin's uh, inbreeding comments actually are factually supported. He allows them to espouse their beliefs to his audience, thereby lending his guests credibility and an audience to preach to. By doing this consistently, is pushing their vile messages closer and closer into the mainstream. What are their vile messages? This is a YouTube video. Miley Yiannopoulos on why he doesn't believe in man-made climate change. Vile. Vile. Fearful. Because being told constantly the world's going to end because of carbon is not fear-mongering. 
By doing this consistently, he is pushing their vile messages closer and closer into the mainstream and contrib contributing to their acceptance in this, the social media world. His viewers have become susceptible to illogical, xenophobic, and hateful rhetoric because Rogan gives people like Jones and Yiannopoulos a platform where they are not challenged and called out for their words and behavior. Except they are. Constantly. I mean, he's a Rogan's agreeable, but he's going to push back on ridiculous stuff. In the wake of the Sinclair Broadcasting Group's mass fake news message, yeah, apparently warning people with a corporate memorandum about the growing trend of fake news on social media is really something you guys were against, huh? It is imperative that we call out organizations and people who repeatedly undermine the truth for their own benefits, which is ironically what Sinclair was doing with that fake news message. So I'm, I'm not sure where you're going here. Joe Rogan, inverted as it might be, is contributing to the narrative that all media is filled with gross misinformation, I would say most media, and deceit. Yeah, most media. All this serves to do is further damage the public's trust in institutions and truth itself. Well, there we are. Pulling hard to get Joe Rogan's podcast ended, though. I'm not really sure he's trying to build some kind of groundswell. But it, it just figures. Another... Uh, Someone I'm sure would call himself left-leaning, but because he's in favor of free speech, he gets tarred as a conspiracy theorist for having an open mind and discussing taboo ideas. And a, a tool of the alt-right by having people who aren't alt-right talk about conservative ideas. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, we are the Republic's walls. They will have to come and take it.